Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. Today, it's, I'm going to delay the butterfly effect because I have to do a little bit of coverage on Algarve because stage two yesterday was just absolutely insane. The tactics from Team Enos. Now we know them as Team Sky from years back and it's the Sky Train, now it's Enos and they're still employing the Sky Train tactics even though they don't have the best rider in the race here. Now last year, every time we saw them win, we're talking about in Spain, we're talking about Switzerland at Romandy, France with Dauphiné, Egon Bernal win in Giro d'Italia. They were absolutely fabulous and always doing the Sky Enos train tactic 101 when you have the best rider in the race. Now all of a sudden we get here at Algarve, it's stage two, they don't have the best rider in the race. The whole reason why we're seeing quick step on the front is because Remco Evnepoel is the hands down outright favorite in this race when we're beginning stage two. When you look at the Enios team, they got solid guys here. Seven riders and six of them are ballers. They can all ride, they can all win the general classification here, but they're not the outright favorite as Remco Evnepoel is. That's why Quick Step is on the front. When you watch Quick Step chasing, it's not because they won stage two with Fabio Jakobsen. It's because they have the legendary young kid Remco Evnepoel that can ball. Now, we saw Remco Evnepoel win a stage in Valencia when he dominated on the uphill finish. He lost the GC to Vlasov on the next gravel uphill finish. But if you remember right, stage four, I believe it was, doing the sprint train all the way into the finish. That kid pulled for four kilometers on the flat stage at the finish to lead out his train. That tactic was a nightmare, and I covered that here on Beyond the Coverage. But the absolutely dominating display of performance from Remco's legs and his just massive, monstrous display of four kilometers on the front was impressive. Now we go here, stage one at Algarve. He does the same thing at the finish for again, Fabio Jakobsen who wins stage one. But when he does that pull, he destroys the whole field and splits everybody off and causes time gaps. So when we start stage two, everybody here at Algarve racing, all the professionals know that Remco Evnepoel is the hands outright favorite. So what do you got to do to beat the outright favorite? We hear it all the time. Every Tour de France, when you viewers are tuning in and you're watching the Tour de France live, every commentator saying, you have to isolate Tade Pogacar. Okay, those tactics still work here at Algarve. If Remco Evnepoel's the best, and your Enos with seven riders and six are all ballers. Maybe not on their best, best form. We all know G. Thomas is an absolute baller when he's on his best form. Here it's not his best, but does not mean he can't win general classification when you have six riders this strong. So what happens? They finally get Remco Evnepoel almost isolated. He's down to just one teammate. Louis Valvaki is his last teammate from Quick Step Left. He's basically isolated. Valvaki can do a good job of setting pace, but when you're isolated with 20 kilometers to go and two more mountain climbs, one teammate, that is looking dangerous. And remember, Valvaki's not, not well known. I mean, I've been watching bike races and been a bike racer for 25 years, racing pro in Europe. And I'm familiar with him, but I don't think he's a baller at this point in time in his career. He looks very good this year, but not that outright climber, that specialist that could just ride for two mountain climbs to keep Remco Evnepoel in check. So at that point in time with 20 kilometers to go, Remco Evnepoel is basically isolated. Okay, we look at Enos. They have all of their top six ballers in this race. Haters here, G. Thomas is here, Martinez is here, Castro Viejo is still in the group, and let's not forget Dylan Van Barley and, of course, Tom Pedcock. Tom Pedcock is a big-time baller, so we got six guys to look at at this race from one team that can dominate. But remember, 
one guy, Remco Evnipol, if he has better form, there's nothing Six can do against one if you're just going to try to drop him with the Sky Enios train. Come on, guys. I mean, you're doing a train with Remco Evnipol. You got him isolated. The next move after isolation is attack. It's not pull the favorite number one rider in the race all the way to the line and hope that he gets a flat so that you guys are next up in line as the best next go-to guys here on general classification. Remco Evnipol, as soon as he gets isolated down to one teammate with one K with 20k to go, start attacking. See what you can do, Enios. Go up the road with G. Thomas. He, G. Thomas can get up the road with just about anybody else in this race and be the favorite in that group. Certainly Martinez is on flying form. Dylan Van Barley, oh my God, can you imagine getting Dylan Van Barley in a group of five up the road? Most likely he's gonna be the best guy there and he's gonna put time on quick step. It's gonna force Valvaki to chase until he blows. And then Remco Evnerpool is gonna have to go across. Then you set your team sky guys, whoever's left back there, Tom Pedcock, Martinez, Ethan Hader. You set them on the wheel and they get a free ride until Remco Evnerpool blows up. And then you jump across over, up to the front group with Dylan Van Barley and try to go win the general classification. Instead, Enos, dude, the only thing that I think they know how to do is the Sky Enos train. They get on the front, they pull like crazy. Remco Evnipol sitting back there with one teammate. He's safe. He doesn't have to touch the wind. Enos is up there blowing guys left and right. G. Thomas is the first to blow up. Then they start blowing up. Jonathan Castro Viejo. Dylan Van Barley, who did a fantastic ride on the front. It wasn't intelligent, but it was impressive. Dylan Van Barley's there all the way to near the top with just under 1K to go. And then it's Martinez who's setting a blistering pace on the last 500 meters to bring back the glass drive rider, Federico, who attacked with 1K to go. Then it's the stunner rider, Battistella, who I cannot say his name without thinking, Stella! He attacks with 350 meters to go, and Enos is on the front just driving. But now we're seeing they're actually doing the sprint for Ethan Hader. Martinez is setting a blistering pace. Ethan Hader there is jumps off his wheel to the left when it's the Yumbo Visma rider Foss who throws in the attack. Aguita tries to pass Foss on the left side. They bump bars, they crash hard, and it's the French rider Davi Godu that wins the stage. Ethan Hader gets third on the stage. The American Brandon McNulty, who's a time trial specialist, is absolutely on flying form this early 2022 season. Got to believe he's a big threat now on the with the time trial coming up in two stages and possibly a good threat for the general classification. Now, I want to point one more thing out before I go because Adam Blythe, who did an exceptional job commentating on this stage two, at Algarve, he pointed one amazing thing out. When we're talking about the French team, FDJ, Stefan Kuhn rode for David Godu, and Stefan Kuhn is a time trial specialist. Adam Blythe pointed out that maybe FDJ would have been better off saving Stefan Kuhn in order for this to fight for this general classification. Gotta believe that's a good possibility. You go a little bit deeper, you look at the FDJ team, though it's not super strong. They don't have very good numbers. I believe there are only five riders left in the race. So if they did, which I agree with Adam, maybe they should have, but if they did, it would be an exciting race here at Algarve because FDJ trying to control this whole race after Stefan Kuhn, if he could win the time trial and be in the GC lead, would absolutely make for an exciting race. Now, Enos, I don't know what they're going to do. When they have the strongest team in the world, it's easy to just ride the train. But when you got to beat someone else like Tade Pogacar, Primoz Roglic, who let me remind you viewers at home, they haven't beat one of those two Slovenians in more than a couple years at any race. As dominant as Enos were last year, they never won against those two Slovenian guys who are absolutely the most dominant riders in the world. So when they're here at Algarve, and now you got a fight against a Remco Evnerpool and you're not better than him on paper going into stage two with a summit finish. You got to play some tactics, guys. Come on. That was a knucklehead move 
from Enos to ride the Sky Enos train as their first tactic when Remco Evnipol is isolated back there with 20 kilometers to go. Now going into stage three, which is on right now while I'm recording this, Remco Evnipol will have help with FDJ to be able to control stage three. FDJ has race leader Davi Godu now, and so you know they're going to want to control the stage today and go into the time trial for stage four. So Ramco Evnipol is going to be happy to go into the time trial stage four, even on time, exactly where this stage two finished. He's got now FDJ team to combine with. So now that he has only six teammates left because Tim DeClerc dropped out of the race, but FDJ have five total. Now all of a sudden you're looking at 11 riders with everything to gain by going into the time trial. FDJ will keep the yellow jersey. Stefan Kuhn, who lost around 20 seconds on stage two, will have a chance to go for GC, while Davi, Davi Godu, I believe, will lose time in that time trial. But when we're talking about quick step, Remco Evnipol, now he has to be the favorite for the time trial. Now, Enos have a lot of time trial specialists, but they're not on great form. And we know Remco Evnipol, like I told you, on his stage four at Valencia domination. And of course, stage one lead out of Fabio Jakobsen here at Algarve. We know he can pedal on the flats and everywhere else. So he should be the hot favorite for stage four time trial. And now, because of the SkyTrain tactics on stage two, he has help to ride stage three and then a time trial for all his domestiques to rest in and then go into the last stage with six quick step riders, five domestiques all rested and ready to ride strong for just one day to win the general classification. It's going to be exciting over there at Algarve. I'll see you guys real soon on the Butterfly Effect for Ruta del Sol. Coming up soon here today still. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the Butterfly Effect.